Alrighty, here we are at the start of turn three. So the Confederates, you can see, are moving up pretty good. We'll zoom in a little bit on the action. We got, uh, I'm going to have to let this focus because I honestly cannot read those counters that I made by hand because they're too dark. So we got Lieutenant Colonel, that's not a very good counter actually. Fer Fergus, Fergie or something, Ferguson? Maybe? I don't know. He took over for Colonel Oates. So maybe I'll look that up when I get a chance. Um, so to try to make the game a little more maybe realistic isn't the best word, but trying to make it reasonable. I am trying to keep my regiments together. There are opportunities where, you know, some of these guys could have pushed out here a little bit. Like one more hex. They wouldn't have pushed out like here or something, but... Um, trying to keep them together with other units of their regiment as much as possible um, because otherwise it would just be a glob of men moving up the hill and that's not really what they did back then. They they seemed to try to keep formation as much as possible within reason, right? So I uh, kind of did that. Um, so we're starting to get uh, the 44th Alabama and the 47th Alabama uh, over here are trying to push on the 4th uh, Main, uh, trying to push on the uh, southern side of Devil's Den. Uh, so here was the 15th Alabama, we already talked about them. Uh, the 4th Alabama, I'm going to kind of swing them up, you know, kind of just swing them up this way. We'll see what happens. You know, it, it does seem like a lot of Confederates, but what I'm thinking is, is... Um, you know, you have different fatigue levels coming up here on turn, like, 15. It's going to take, I mean, they're moving three, four hexes a turn through these woods. So, I mean, that's going to take, I mean, what is that? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I mean, that's probably six, seven turns, you know. So, that's going to take some time to get through those woods at, at eight minutes a turn. I mean, you're talking an hour to get through those trees. Um, the Texas and Arkansas brigades here and all that's going to be a different story. Uh, I think they're going to slam pretty hard next turn into these guys on Hoax Ridge and around Devil's Den and into that woods over there. Um, and this little unit, <laughs> so I, you know, I haven't played this forever. So I was thinking these guys would be able to boogie on down all the way and maybe get into here as kind of a reserve, you know, in kind of this area right here. Uh, but <laughs> they're probably going to end up jumping into the line pretty quick just to stop the stem of Robertson's brigade. So he's got to be the biggest problem because he's got a lot of dudes that are A's, which is good morale. Uh, not likely that they'll even disorder and they pretty much won't retreat unless they uh, get ineffective. And then they got a lot of stands that are, you know, five, six, seven strong. Uh, so almost twice as strong as a lot of these Union ones here. So we'll see. The Union's going to get to pepper them pretty good here on the defensive fire, which is next. And then the uh, Confederate offensive fire. But I'm kind of excited to see what happens. And then we got Vincent's men coming in on this area, and i got to decide what to do. I don't think I'm just going to do the, uh, the historical get on little round top and wait not really sure I want to do that. I'm thinking maybe I'll come down off a little round top a little bit. I got to read the rules on the artillery. I think this is the artillery line right here. It's either this one or this one. So if they, if the artillery can hit them here, they're probably going to come down here so they're out of artillery range. Because the, uh, the problem with all this Confederate artillery, we got all kinds of artillery. We haven't used hardly any rounds. But once they got within 10 hexes of the enemy, they can't fire at them. You know, that's just too close. They wouldn't be dropping shells in like smart bombs, right? So that's where we're at. So not a lot of ammo getting used yet. I'm sure it'll get used up as that hill starts getting full of stuff. But uh, we'll see what happens. But I'll do some defensive fire, and uh, that's coming up next. So defensive fire, then offensive fire. Then I'll show you the results, and then we do the union move. So good stuff. Thanks for watching. All right, here we are back to the uh, turn three, the defensive fire for the Union and the offensive fire for the Confederates. We got a little bit of skirmishing in the woods here, not a lot happening. Uh, we had the 4th Main. Their left flank started to evaporate here. They had a unit that totally got destroyed. 
And then up here on Hoax Ridge, we had the 124th New York had a unit shatter. So they actually have a couple of uh, union counters that are off the board permanently. Uh, that was a tough loss because that was three strength points next to the artillery that rolled a bad, they became ineffective, and then they rolled a six, and uh, it shattered them. So that wasn't good. And the uh, 86 New York is continuing to have trouble getting up on the line. They got one unit in full retreat and another unit disorder. They've taken a couple casualties. They're down about 30 casualties so far. Uh, the biggest problem, though, is Lieutenant Colonel Higgins, which was right here on this unit. Um, he got wounded. And uh, so he has, so we got a couple of, <laughs> a couple of, uh, the generic major for the 86th New York and a Lieutenant Colonel Cummings for the 124th New York. So um, this tends to be a bloody affair here today for the for the officer corps. They are not doing well when they're taking hits. They're getting wounded and killed. Um, I think we're down four four officers, and we're I suppose game time. We're about 20 minutes into the fighting. So yeah, we'll see how it pans out. So next will be the union turn. So we're going to start seeing some union over here. And then, uh, so I'm going to need to probably read some stuff on that artillery for the Union to make sure that I don't put them in a position where they just get shelled for free, and uh, if it's possible. And then uh, we'll have to see. It's not looking all that good for the um, the Union boys holding this line. They, they got probably half an hour to an hour oh, so no no each turns eight minutes so i'd say they probably got somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 30 minutes at most and that line's going to be gone we might be able to stem the tide over here with the uh who is this the 99th pennsylvania maybe they can get over there and help i don't know but we'll see these guys are going to continue to scrounge for ammo it's been been pretty ugly we'll see what happens but uh, the chaos is definitely ensuing, so just kind of makes you wonder that day how crazy things were. It just This isn't even that big of a portion of the battle, so I was also thinking how cool would it be to play the whole Battle of Gettysburg at this scale, or even a few other smaller battles, but yeah, that'd be pretty epic. So that's a vassal module thing because there's no way anybody would have the table space for it, but that would be... That would be epic. I would I would love to see a game like that. Anyway... Uh, talk at you guys later. Bye. Hey everybody, give you a little bit different view here, standing up, because now the board's getting some some action all over the board. So this is after the Union movement phase. So I haven't done Confederate defensive fire yet, or obviously offensive fire. So uh, basically, the Union is trying to shore up these woods here in desperate last stand to try to push the fourth and the. 5th Texas back. I don't think that's going to go very well. we got the 99th Pennsylvania coming up over here, right behind Hoax Ridge. Uh, the cannons have pushed themselves back a few yards, 40 yards or so, to try to buy themselves a few more precious minutes of time. Uh, master of Indecision here. I was running that gun up there, and he would have been kind of back here. And I thought, you know what, he's going to go sit on that ridge and as Confederates start coming over Hoax Ridge, he's just going to start firing at them. Because I don't see it getting any better for him. Uh, we tried to shore up a little bit here, uh, south of Devil's Den, uh, trying to form some kind of a line. And a couple remnants of the sharpshooters, about 30 dudes, have kind of found each other out here in the woods and they're kind of pulling together to try to... Uh, Try to slow the Confederates a little bit. I mean, they're not really going to do much, but you know, keep them honest, right? So they can't go into column or something. And then we got Vincent Strong's Brigade coming on the board here. Uh, the artillery, from my understanding, for the Confederates can fire all the way to here on up. So I didn't see a lot of benefit other than I'm moving three of the regiments that'll be coming behind the higher terrain here. And then I got this crappy little regiment here. I'm going to move them across the front. <coughs> Probably not the greatest move, but 
What I tend to do playing solo is I don't give myself a ton of time to think. I kind of just say, okay, they're going there, they're going, and then I move them, and I, you know, I did. I mean, I think, but I mean, I I try to make my decision, and I don't back up and let myself remove. So if I made a wrong turn, I make it count. That gives me a little more fog of war playing solo. But uh, you can see it's getting pretty dicey here. So this is going to be the end of turn three. Uh, turn four, I don't think there's any reinforcements coming in. Turn five, the 40th New York will come in over here on B, which is going to be desperately needed, I think, to get over here. So it's going to be fun. You know, I don't think I've ever played, when I was a young kid, I don't think I ever played past turn five, four or five. So just didn't have, you just had the attention span of a gnat, apparently, but... Uh, so yeah, so this is what it's looking like. Uh, it's a gorgeous looking game. Uh, those of you that have it, I, I know there's some critiques about it that it tends up being a bunch of disordered markers all over the map, not doing anything. I'm kind of house ruling that a little bit. I'm making myself keep formation. Because from everything I know about history and, and uh, whatnot, I mean, they would try to keep them in formation as much as possible. They wouldn't just let guys uh, start straggling. Oh, I do have to make a roll. I forgot him. He can do random movement. He is our first out-of-command, guys, because his commander ended up over here. Uh, so we're starting to get command problems. I know there's guys that have said, well, geez, you seem to have enough command points to do everything. But honestly, if you have one ineffective unit, and two disordered units, you effectively can rally those two disordered units and give a move order so you can move your units. That's it. I mean, you'll get to fire, but you can't do fixed bayonets, you can't melee, you, you know, if you're going to try rallying. So once you get two disordered units and even one ineffective unit, these guys that have nine command points are kind of done. So those bonus command points, uh, which I, I guess I didn't use, I didn't need them, um, I took them off, so you get these red bonus command points over here, right? So you get those, and um, <laughs> this right here, this was a uh, a uh, counter clipping accident. It's kind of <laughs> ugly using this clipper here instead of an actual clipper, and uh, that's what you get. But anyway, so um, so I do have to do him. I forgot that guy, so I'm going to do him. And see if he can move, and he's gonna try to probably get over there closer to the uh, the victory point hexes on Hulk's Ridge, or at least scooch over and try to get a little bit closer because he's everybody around him ran or died, so it's getting kind of brutal around Devil's Den. So okay, thanks for tuning in. Uh, when you come back, it'll um, the next video I'll be throwing up. Well, I guess I tie all the turns together, so the uh, the next point I'll do after this is the. Uh, defensive of the confederates and then the uh, fire for the union so this should be fun okay bye okay everybody welcome back to the end of turn three pretty eventless um i want to say there was maybe two three total casualties on the offensive defensive fire of the union turn um but because of a shattered center i mean that center is getting pretty bare because it had one hole you know i think each of these um I want to say each one of these counters would represent roughly two companies. So essentially two companies of the 124th New York evaporated around Devil's Den from basically running off, routing, because they were shattered. So uh, makes for an interesting turn for the, Confeder uh, the, the Union because now the Union are up to 270 casualties in one gun and the Confederacy is at 255 and two guns. Uh, the uh, rifles and the parrot guns can make it to Little Round Top. The Napoleons are not allowed to fire that far. Basically, the Napoleons can fire at anything in this area here, along, along down in here. So, kind of a, I don't know, not a great setup because half the guns are Napoleons <laughs> for the Confederates. But, uh... I don't know. Maybe some of this stuff is errated or whatever. I don't. I don't care that much. I'm. I'm enjoying it. Uh, uh, just kind of going through the process. I'm, I'm excited to see how those guys of Vincent's brigade start to shake out on Little Round Top. I was gonna not go historical on the lineup, and 
I'm probably not going to be historical, but based on the troop qualities and the size, this little one that got hit by artillery in the front with a disorder, they all double-timed in column. Um, I'm going to risk their dropping their morale to double-time them because they need to get into position and get into line out of column. Uh, so we'll see what happens, but um, over here it was pretty stagnant, so this turned the Confederates... Uh, Sorry, it's come off. Uh, this turned the Confederates will uh, because the reason that came off is because they made another ineffective one. Um, the next turn here on turn four, the uh, Confederates are going to probably charge and melee the 86 New York, which is going to be a problem. And then hopefully coming into B section there, we're going to get the 40th New Jersey or 40th New York. I don't remember who it is. Let's see. Let's give you the right name at least, huh? Uh, it's the 40th New York. Comes in over there by the uh, the cannon that's running back to that ridge. That's kind of embarrassing. But anyway, uh, that's it. Um, I will put this up. This is be turn three, the end of turn three. And we're going to start turn four. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see if the Confederates can push. And then I'm guessing there's going to be kind of a lull, a little bit of a lull, as they just go through the woods here. And maybe the stragglers from the Union try to regroup while the uh, Confederates pull themselves together and get ready to attack. I don't know. Honestly, like I said, I think I've, well, you know what, I think I've probably played to like turn six or seven. I just don't remember it. But, I, you know, never played very far in these games. But it's a... It's a gorgeous looking map. It's a nice looking table. The counters are nice. I, I know I said this in an earlier uh, video I made, but wouldn't it be epic if we could play the full get Battle of Gettysburg on a map this beautiful uh, with five counters per regiment? A whole battle. Is there anything like that out there? I need to look for that. If I found that... That would be the new thing I'd be playing on a regular basis because it would have to be on Vassal because it would be so huge, but it would be so, that would be so awesome. Any any of the big battles, Gettysburg, Antietam, uh, even the, any of the Peninsula campaign, I'd do any of that stuff. I'd even do Wilson's Creek at that level. Anything would be cool. So anyway, okay, I'm just kind of fantasizing and rambling and embarrassing myself at this point. So I will uh, let you go. That's the end of turn three. And we are going to start turn four. So we're roughly 24 minutes into the battle, about a half an hour. It's kind of cool to see stat-wise what would be going on. Thanks for joining me, and I'll uh, get back to you soon.